So pretend we're all three-year-olds, uh, Nathaniel. Uh, the, what the hell is this thing? Here are uh, uh, the three metaphors I've found most useful for the layers of this because there are different things going on in Bitcoin. I, I think the top layer, um, and this isn't just uh, promoting my book, is the idea of digital gold. Th this is the, the token that, uh, that is worth something that people pay something for and it's a scarce commodity like gold, but instead of a physical substance, it's a digital substance. So that's, that's one part of it. Uh, the next metaphor that I've found useful is that it is email for money. It's a way that you can send uh, money, just as you can send information with email to someone anywhere in the world, as long as you have their address. You don't need to go through their company, and they, you don't need to go to your bank or to the postal post office to send something. It's a, it's a sort of protocol that allows you to send things, around, send money around, so like email. And then the third part of it, and this is where it gets more complicated, um, but it's essentially just a big uh, uh, spreadsheet in the sky in which all of these little digital tokens are recorded. And, um, and it's that spreadsheet that allows for some of the more complicated uh, uses of Bitcoin and that gets people thinking in really futuristic terms. But um, those are the kind of uh, simple images that I use to, to capture these different elements of it, which even in themselves, those metaphors get, get kind of confusing. So you're at the Bitcoin Foundation. Yes. But the Bitcoin Foundation doesn't run Bitcoin. No, it in doesn't. In fact, nobody does. No, no. Uh, well, and everybody does. Everybody who chooses to participate Everybody who chooses to run some software to try to maybe create some bitcoins by buying some hardware and doing what's Explain called Bitcoin how mining. Explain how, how can I get a bitcoin? Um, I can send one to you. You can get a digital wallet. You can get a wallet on your cell phone. It's probably the easiest way. There are a bunch of different bitcoin wallets. And then um, you, know, you find somebody who has some and you buy them. Or you do what I did, you know, you get a job that pays you in Bitcoin and then, you know, get your salary sent to you in Bitcoin every month just as, you know, instead of into your bank account, it goes into your digital wallet. So it's, it's really no different than any other currency, right? How do I get euros if I need some euros for something? Well, I either earn them because I'm French and I'm, you know, working for euros or I buy them at a, you know, at some exchange if, uh, if I'm going to Europe and I happen to have some dollars. And Bitcoins are, are, are the same. So... The goal of the Bitcoin project, if you read Satoshi's paper, really was to be the world's first successful digital cash, to be a successful currency like euros or dollars. Um, we're not there yet. Who knows but if Bitcoin will ever a, get there. Not issued by a government or controlled by any one individual. That's right. No, issued by everybody who wants to participate in the network and um, validated by everybody who's participating. So this spreadsheet in the sky Everybody sees, everybody makes sure that all of the rules are followed. And, and assuming that the rules are followed, then you have a valid Bitcoin transaction. And so if I were to send you some Bitcoins, that transaction would get sent to this giant spreadsheet in the sky. These people who are creating Bitcoins will validate it, put it together with a bunch of other transactions, create a block in the blockchain. And then that's kind of the permanent record that yes, I in fact gave some Bitcoins to you and now you have them and you can in turn give them to somebody else. Fred, this sounds effing crazy. <laughs> you, 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 you put money into this? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, you know, I actually don't think that the spreadsheet analogy is exactly right. I, I like to think of the blockchain as, as a peer-to-peer -peer database. Um, and so we, we know what databases are, Oracle, Sybase, MySQL. We, we've had you know, databases in computer science for 50 years now, and they run almost every system in the world, has a database underneath it. And uh, the problem with those databases are that those databases are fragile because uh, if they crash, you could lose information on it. But the thing that's really cool about the blockchain is that it's a database that is peer-to-peer -peer and massively replicated and massively distributed. So if one node goes down, nothing's lost. So think of it, you know, when, th when they designed the internet, they designed the internet to be a network that you couldn't take down because it was, it was massively distributed. And if you took out a piece of the internet, the packets would just flow through some other way. 
And I like to think of the blockchain as the same thing for databases. When did you realize, you got involved in this very, very early on. 2010, yeah. When did you realize, or, or what was it that attracted you to this? So, um, well, I'm a geek, <laughs> and I'm interested in technology. It says it right there. <laughs> it's on the shirt. Um, so the technology interested me. It's very interesting, kind of cutting-edge computer science in there um, that solves this problem that nobody figured out how to solve before, of how do you create a, a, a digital asset that's scarce, right? The digital, you know, uh, pictures you have on your iPhone, you can copy willy-nilly, they're not scarce. How do you create a digital asset that's scarce? And that's this distributed, massive global database idea that Satoshi figured out. Um, I'm also interested in, in kind of that armchair interest in economics and kind of how money works. Uh, that attracted to me the, to the system, and I've been very interested in peer-to-peer -peer systems, you know, systems where there is no central point of failure, or central point of control. Um, I really like, and I think that's the story of the internet, is you know, giving people a voice when they never had a voice before. Unless you're a publisher of a newspaper, how would you get your ideas out there? Well, now you can post on Facebook, you can have a blog, you can, you know, and bringing that to money really appeals to me. I think there will be all sorts of effects that we can't even begin to imagine.